Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Pepe on the one hour. Um, people still losing their shirts over this coin. It is down even more today. Yesterday we were talking a little bit about Pepe coin because it was the hot new coin that people are FOMOing into. And I mean, most people did already hear about it in and around here. And uh, then it really started heating up in and around here. You may have caught a little bit of profits, but at this point in time, I think it is too late. I would never FOMO into a meme coin like this, guys. This is a perfect example of, uh, you know, where you could lose your shirt. So it was down 49% off that high from yesterday. And guys, now it's down even more. Uh, it did see a low uh, moving down 66% to the downside. And now it's trading at about 56. It's down about 56 and a half percent. So, uh, you know, what is forming? Uh, let me just bring up a pen tool here. What is forming like an inverted pennant pattern? So a bearish pennant pattern which would suggest uh, another move to the downside. Not saying it will, not saying it won't, not suggesting any sort of financial advice whatsoever. Just thought I'd bring this to your attention considering we have been following it now for a while. Let's bring up the XRP chart here, guys. XRP right now trading at about 42.4. So uh, bounced off of support down and around here. Uh, we did see a bit of a rebound. It was coming back down right now, looking like XRP is forming that double bottom pattern. Stephanie Starr acknowledging something about the XRP chart. We are right back where we were at the end of March. So um, yeah, I mean, we have seen a bit of a fall from grace. A lot of this uh, had to do with the Bitcoin price. Bitcoin moving downward because of the, uh, you know, rising transaction fees on the network. We had Binance yesterday halting Bitcoin withdrawals. So, um, you know, it was a bit of a mess yesterday. By and large, though, uh, you know, the crypto space is still looking very, very robust on the daily. If we zoom out here, we can see, you know, the Bitcoin chart still holding its own here, holding support down in and around here. And I've even said, you know, even if we make our way back down to here for Bitcoin price. That would bring XRP probably down quite a bit as well. Uh, that would be a price of about, what would that be? Let's say about $25,200 per BTC. Uh, you know, that would still technically be making higher lows. Uh, and so, you know, this is going to be the next nut to crack here, 31,000 roughly. But I mean, even if we do go back down here, uh, and rise again above $31,000, we are still continuously making a, uh, a higher high. So higher lows, higher highs, still a bullish market. We might feel some pain in the meantime, though, just going back to the XRP chart here. XRP right now trading at 42.4. And I know for those of you guys looking at your portfolios, you're probably not, uh, you know, too excited about this uh, price move to the downside. Just remember though, guys, what we saw back in 2016 before that pop off top for 2017. And, uh, you know, maybe where we could see the trend go over here, if we superimpose this, where we could see the trend go before, uh, you know, the blast off right to the upside. Let's not forget, uh, if I squeeze this in here, I mean, it does uh, compare quite similarly to what we saw back at that time. Take a look at those levels. I mean, it's really kind of interesting how uh, how well these are matching up. And even back then, we did see ups and downs. We did see, you know, the equivalent of, uh, you know, the kinds of measured moves that we are seeing today. So, um, you know, even if XRP comes right back down in here, it would come back down in and around this zone here, right, where we've touched down several times before. That would mean technically we could see an XRP of about 34, 35 cents, give or take, maybe lower. As you guys can see, uh, you know, we did wick down, lower down in here. So, um, you know, it is something to be paying attention to. 29.9, 30 cents, you know, anywhere between 30 and we'll say 34, 35. We could see XRP in that range here before we start moving to the upside. Now, the positive news there, if you guys are still looking to pack your bags, that would be the time to do it. Of course, again, not financial advice, but just some observations here with regards to the ever flowing crypto market. I also wanted to bring this to your attention, guys. I've been seeing this all over Twitter. The Bank of Canada for Canadians specifically, and I urge you, if you are Canadian, please go to the link in the description of this video. Find this link here. Uh, the Bank of Canada wants your input about a central bank digital currency. You may have heard that the Bank of Canada is working on something called a CBDC or a digital Canadian dollar. It doesn't exist yet, but we're getting ready in case one day Parliament and the government of Canada ask to issue one. Hmm. They even say here it would not replace cash. 
Yeah, right. You should probably also take a screen grab of this just to uh, hold them to account in case they do change their mind. Anyway, uh, this is a survey. So um, again, I will link this in the description of the video. Um, and I mean, uh, you know, I mean, for anybody who really wants to take the survey, I guess you can. I don't know if you have to prove uh, that you're a Canadian citizen or not. Uh, nevertheless, if you are a Canadian citizen, I urge you stop the Bank of Canada from thinking this is a good idea. Anything you guys can do to help, I think, would be great because, uh, you know, this is the way the world is moving. It's already happening in other countries. The Bank of Canada is now introducing a questionnaire asking the same. And I mean, quite frankly, we don't even really know what's going to happen in the U.S. Sounds like a nice nine situation to me. This from the ISO GOAT here on Twitter. U.S. government may freeze American bank withdrawals as currency panic and capital flight mounts. Nobody is safe, guys. Hedge fund manager and macroeconomic expert Hugh Hendry just issued a major warning on the U.S. banking system and the American economy as a whole. In a new interview from Bloomberg Markets, Hendry says mass panic and capital flight away from the U.S. banking sector is entirely justified. Hendry says a further decline in the M2 money supply which in part tracks money in liquid checking accounts, could convince the U.S. government to step in and prevent citizens from taking their capital out of the banking system. Sometimes it's kind of relevant to panic, he says. I would recommend you panic, he says. You've seen the biggest waterfall decline in M2 right now. M2 is deposits, not loans. That's the deposits fleeing the system and going into money market funds. Uh, that could reach a crescendo where the Treasury and the Fed may have come in and actually restrict your rights as a U.S. citizen to pull money out of the U.S. banking sector. Hendry says capital flight from U.S. banks is not solely about fears on whether the FDIC will insure deposits above $250,000 and a blanket guarantee on deposits would not solve the problem. Uh, he goes on to say there is capital flight deposit flight from the banking sector seeking yield. I fear that, I don't say this lightly, but in 1934, the Federal Reserve Act confiscated gold from U.S. citizens. We're at a point where the Fed and Treasury officials, I'm sure, are having to consider a gate, a lock on U.S. bank deposits. So, where are you guys going to put your money? Again, just going back to this Bank of Canada thing, the central bank digital currency, you know, this is just another step to control the people. And, uh, you know, if our capital is not safe in the banks, where is it going to be safe uh, when it comes to where Americans can place their capital amid the uncertainty? Hendry says his go-to is U.S. Treasuries and potentially Bitcoin. So, I mean, Bitcoin would obviously extend to other cryptocurrencies. It's time to own the most reviled security in the universe, the ultra-long Treasuries, he says. Uh, I know you all think that's got an inflation problem. It was a supply shock, and a supply shock needs the manifestation of more and more bank printing of loans to propel it into the future. We're getting the opposite, he says. He also says, I've not got the bug, but Bitcoin is something I could conceive of as an asset class that could trade three or four times higher in the next five years. Yeah, uh, there is no other asset class that I could make that determination. Well, uh, you know, you take Bitcoin, that's obviously the, uh, you know, the granddaddy of cryptocurrencies, but, you know, there's so many other cryptocurrencies that are going to rally along with Bitcoin. So, you know, um, I mean, he's got some pretty sound advice here, uh, but by extension, not just Bitcoin, obviously all coins that do solve problems. It's going to be difficult, though, because more cryptocurrency exchanges are filing for bankruptcy. This one from Eleanor Turret here, and this was breaking. I saw this yesterday. Bittrex Exchange has now filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And for those of you guys who do not know, the Bittrex Exchange is one of the ODL exchanges here. I had to look this up on the Wayback Machine uh, from XRP Arcade uh, because he had this listed and uh, he no longer runs the site. But I just wanted to double check Bittrex, one of those ODL exchanges. So... Is this going to affect ODL? She says the move comes less than a month after the SEC charged Bittrex and its CEOs for operating an unregistered national securities exchange broker and clearing agencies. Of course, we got uh, the XRP community and their opinions on this. Stephanie Starr, not too happy about this. Uh, you know, other people saying, you know, this is just not good for the industry. Why is Bittrex folding? Let me read you guys a little bit of this. For those customers who did not withdraw their funds from the platform prior to the end of April, your funds remain safe and secure. So guys, it has uh, no, it has nothing to do with, um, you know, the, the company collapsing and the funds being lost or anything like that. So the funds are safe and secure, they say. And our main priority is to ensure that our customers are made whole. While the bankruptcy court will ultimately decide the method by which those funds can be claimed by and distributed to our customers, we intend to ask the court to activate those accounts as soon as possible so that customers meeting the necessary necessary regulatory requirements will be able to withdraw them. Now, guys, another reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is because you should always be wary. Never keep your cryptocurrency 
on an exchange. As I've been saying for years now, keep your currency safe on a cold storage solution like the Ledger Nano or something similar. I've got an affiliate link in the description of every video I do. I personally love the Ledger Nano. I've been using it for years. These guys have never sent me wrong. And uh, again, I do have that affiliate link in the description of every video I do. Uh, you can use the link if you want. You don't have to use it. But do you really want the cryptocurrency exchange that you're using to go bankrupt? And then, uh, I mean, in this case, users are lucky. Bittrex, they're saying, you know, user funds are safe and that, uh, you know, they will not be affected. However, for example, in the case of FTX, that clearly was not the case. We've also got Richard Lay here uh, coming out and saying, yes, we did in fact file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Yes, we still have 100% of all customer funds. Yes, there will be a claims process through the bankruptcy courts. This was the cleanest way to bury the baby. RIP Bittrex Exchange. But on that note, he also addresses this, having previously announced that Bittrex Inc. would be ceasing all operations in the U.S., effective April 30th. We have now made the decision to file Chapter 11 bankruptcy in federal court in Delaware. So uh, it sounds as though they're only going to be ceasing operations in the U.S. alone. Considering ODL is for uh, global markets, uh, it looks as though the on-demand uh, XRP liquidity portion of their business worldwide uh, will not be affected. As they say down here, this announcement does not impact Bittrex Global, which will continue operations as normal for its customers outside the United States. So that is positive news, of course. Uh, you know, ODL in the United States, not a thing because we do not have the clarity for XRP yet in the United States. What we do know though, guys, worldwide, XRP and XLM have appeared on the list of top 100 biggest cross-border payment companies together with the likes of UBS, BOA, and PayPal, this coming from Stellar Tate here on Twitter, recognized as cryptocurrencies, the 2023 cross-border payments 100 list. And there's only three crypto companies on this list, Circle, Ripple, and Stellar. You guys can see that down there. On this list too, though, so many Ripple Partners, I mean, uh, just to name off the top of my head, Airwallex, Flutterwave, Lian Lian Global, MFS Africa, we got Neom here, Paysend, Terra, Paythoons, the Americas, of course, there's Visa, there's uh, MoneyGram down here, who was a partner with Ripple and Stellar, currently a, um, a partner with Stellar, DLocal is a Ripple partner, and then the banks, right, Confirmed, Bank of America, RBC in Canada, Santander, we got BNY Mellon, uh, DBS Bank, uh, Deutsche Bank, BNP Paribas, so, so many Ripple partnerships as well here on this list. Wanted to thank Stellar Tate just for letting us in on, uh, you know, the most updated list, 2023. Matthew L.A.N.Y. here bringing this to our attention. The UAE Crypto Oasis May 2023 report, guys. So this report just came out. Ripple has 20% of its global market in the Middle East and almost 1,000 employees globally. So again, this was Crypto Oasis ecosystem report from the United Arab Emirates. Ripple listed here is one of the projects and startups. You can see that right over here using proven crypto and blockchain technology honed over a decade. Ripple's enterprise grade solutions are faster, more transparent and more cost effective than traditional financial services. Uh, we've also got them uh, listed here, right? Dubai, the emerging crypto hub stealing a lead on other global crypto hubs. And Ripple's got uh, an entire section here from this crypto oasis report. So big in the Middle East, I mean, uh, you know, we've already been noticing that Nav and Gupta here also uh, located in this report. Uh, and over here, they are ta also talking about global protocols, which in this case, uh, you know, the Flare Network is also listed here, along with Hedera HBAR, which I know uh, is another one of those crypto projects that the XRP community is very excited about. So uh, a great new report that just came out, guys, this month, brand new from the Middle East. And so, I mean, it's not to say that Ripple hasn't been trying. They've been trying their hardest to fight the SEC in this lawsuit. Met a lawman here posting this in the U.S. When it comes to the SEC, the process is still punishment. And I think that that is uh, the general consensus from Team Ripple and, uh, you know, the other cryptocurrency companies working in the United States. Ripple will spend $200 million, guys this year in legal funds. Remember when it was just a hundred million, probably about five, six months ago? Brad Garlinghouse was recently at the Dubai FinTech Summit and here's what he had to say. So what's your message to the SEC chair as you sit here in the UAE and in Dubai announcing an expansion of your business to this region given the state of regulation in the United States right now? Who? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, so look, uh, I we were talking about this a little bit earlier. I find it as a, a, US, a company that started in the United States and as someone who's a U.S. citizen, it's sad. Like, I have sadness about this. The U U.S. is getting passed not just a little bit, but by a lot. And, you know, but the tough thing about this is you have a country that I think has put politics ahead of policy. And, you know, that's not a good decision if you're trying to invest in the economy. 
You're seeing, you know, certainly here in the UAE with VARA, the Visual Asset, or sorry, excuse me, Virtual Asset Regulatory Authority. Certainly, what's happened recently in Europe with Mika. Uh, the United States is definitely stuck, and you know, Ripple, the, the the case with the SEC, we will spend. The first time I've shared this publicly, by the time it's said and done, we will have spent $200 million defending ourselves against a lawsuit, which from its very beginning, people were like, this, this doesn't make a lot of sense. You have video footage of the chair of the SEC as a professor at MIT saying 75% of these digital assets are commodities, and now he says they're all securities because he's the head of the SEC and he's seeking power and he's putting power ahead of sound policy to grow an economy in the United States. Blockchain technologies are being invested in and pursued in the entrepreneurship outside the United States. And one of the first pieces of advice I give entrepreneurs when they come and ask me, hey, I'm getting something started, I'll say, if I were you, I would not start in the United States. And I think there's a lot of U.S.-based companies and even U.S. public companies that would agree with that. So, wow, Brian Garling is being uh, quite critical of Gary Gensler. I mean, I'm not surprised about that, uh, considering how this case has gone. But $200 million, wow, what a price tag. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people down here commenting on that. Uh, and, yeah, how are the SEC fighting this with taxpayer dollars? Yeah, probably. Hello, Future Buzz down here saying it's not about the SEC. It's about the entire administration. And uh, yeah, I agree. I kind of like that joke at the beginning. Who? <laughs> As in, we're not doing business there. So we kind of don't really care. I mean, they, they do care, but you know what I mean? Holo here saying Gary Gensler and the SEC, they're forcing innovation overseas in a political fight for power. Politicians like Senator Warren seem to believe that crypto is nothing more than meme coin scams, but the truth is 10% of the overall market provides technology that'll reshape industries this century. Again, guys, 10% of the crypto space. Forget about the noise, forget about the meme coins. It's going to be the cryptocurrencies that solve problems, the XLMs, the XRPs, uh, you know, the Algorands, the VChains, the HBARs. Those cryptocurrencies are going to be the ones that really make the difference. Ripple's battle with the US SEC is reportedly set to cost the firm $200 million. Nikki Lesh here, a reporter at Coindesk, also weighed in on this. Listen to this. The price tag... I have to say, it doesn't really surprise me, right? This has been a case that's been ongoing since the end of 2020. We're literally in three, you know, year three of this. So um, any other company that's looking at this and thinking, oh, well, you know, I might get sued by the SEC, probably has to accept the fact that they're going to need you know, a hefty reserve to be able to fight the case. And you know, obviously, we're seeing things, you know, signs from crypto exchange Coinbase that they will be able to handle that. But if you're a smaller company, Chances are good you're not going to be able to, you know, have that same kind of fight. Um, you know, at this point, we are still kind of in this, you know, waiting period once the summary judgment ruling comes out. And if I had to speculate, I'm guessing that, you know, it's going to be a, we're going to see this case proceed to a trial, but, um, you know, which will be more expensive. It'll be additional cost, additional time, additional everything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, until then, we're still just kind of waiting to see how it shakes out. Still just waiting to see how it shakes out. I mean, I feel like that has been the narrative of the day. Michael Branch here bringing this to our attention. Some positive news, a positive outlook. Uh, you know, we haven't really gotten much of this. A top crypto exec from a top crypto exchange, OKX, says that anti-crypto regulations in the U.S. are only temporary and that the American digital asset sector will become strong once again. This coming from OKX President Hong Fang tells the host Scott Melker of the Wolf of All Streets podcast that he doesn't expect crypto regulation in the U.S. to remain ambiguous forever. I'm very hopeful that the U.S. market will continue to be a strong market for crypto. I don't think that regulatory ambiguity will last forever, but we will see. According to Fang, the crypto industry should strive to embrace regulations, especially if the guidelines are clear and transparent. People have a lot of debate around whether we need regulations or not, but I do think that we're at a point where there's no way going back, and we should embrace it. We should embrace regulation, at least regulatory clarity, so that there is a proper framework for entrepreneurs and engineers and developers to actually build for the future. Fang goes on to note that almost every other jurisdiction has clear crypto regulations, while the regulations in other geographies uh, may not be the best. She says clarity is still better than what the U.S. currently has. Every other jurisdiction has moved forward. I think for average restriction, they at least try to send the signal of, OK, here's how we're going to do it. And then you can optimize on top of that. But the U.S. is still kind of wishy-washy. OK, but a bit of optimism here from Hong Fang. 
the president of OKX with regards to crypto clarity in the United States. Um, and I mean, I want to take the positive approach. I do tend to agree. It is a bit of a crap show at this moment in time. I mean, a $200,000 price tag for a lawsuit that, uh, you know, should not even be happening in the first place certainly should not sit well with the crypto industry. Nevertheless, guys, prices are cheap. Now's the time to accumulate those top cryptos to secure wealth for the future. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.